Hi, everybody. I hope you are enjoying summer. I hope it's going good. My family's enjoying supper. We are eating ice cream and popsicles and spending a lot of time outside. We've been doing like the sprinkler outside a lot. So we are definitely enjoying summer and I hope you are too. I'm so glad that you are joining me for this lesson today. Um, and today, this lesson is gonna be about something very big and something very small. Okay, so um, we're actually going to start with our game, and uh, hopefully that'll kind of get us ready for our lesson. So here we go. This is the game. I'm going to describe something to you, and you have to try to guess what it is that I am talking about. And it's going to be something really big or something really small. Okay, so here we go. This is the first thing. Okay, um, this thing comes in circles. Um, they come in many different colors. They have a letter on them. Um, some people really like them and think they're really, really yummy. Lots of times or most of the time they have chocolate inside them. Um, but sometimes they can have like nuts or pretzels inside them. Any guesses? M&Ms. Yep, yeah, it's M&Ms. They're pretty small, right? Yeah, okay. All right, here's the second thing, okay? This thing can come in lots of different colors. Um, it can have lots of things on it or inside it. Um, it has exits on it. Um, people use this every single day. I'm in one right now. Any guesses? A house. <laughs> yeah, it's a house. And houses are pretty big. Um, although some are maybe a little smaller, they are still quite big. They're larger than we are. So, a house. Good. Okay. Okay. This next thing is kind of gross. Okay. It's normally one color, but it can be different ones. Um, it lives, but it dies after it's cut. It can be different lengths. Any guesses? Yeah. A toenail. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everybody has toenails. And even like your biggest toenail is still pretty small, right? Okay, okay, last one, here we go. This one's gonna be tough. So this thing is a sphere. It is mainly two or three colors, um, but it has lots of colors with it. Okay, um, it's quiet, but it seems kind of loud. Um, this thing moves all the time, but we don't really know that it's moving. That was a good clue. Okay, um, and this thing has eight other things that are very similar to it. It's the planet Earth. Yeah, Earth is huge. Um, did you know that it would take 438 1,755 football fields to stretch around the equator of the earth. That is huge, that's massive. So, okay, thanks for playing our game. Yeah, so our lesson today is all about um, things that are big and some things that are small. Okay, so, um, and those things that we're gonna be talking about are actually some ones. Okay, so the first person we're gonna talk about is David and he was, he's our small one, okay? Any guesses about who the big one is? If you said Dumbo, you are wrong. <laughs> it's Goliath. Yes, hopefully you guessed Goliath, then you would be correct. Okay, so we're gonna open our Bibles. Open your Bibles, okay? Um, to 1 Samuel 17, 1 through, 40, 1 through 11, and then 45 through 50. Okay, so 1 Samuel's in the Old Testament, okay? And once you find 1 Samuel, you're looking for the big number is gonna be 17. Okay, we're gonna start in verse one. Okay, are you ready? Here we go, follow along with me as I read out loud. So here we go. The Philistines gathered their army together for war. They came from Soko in Judah. They set up camp at Ephes Daminin. It was between Soko and Azekah. Saul and the army of Israel gathered together. They camped in the valley of Elea. They lined up their men to fight against the Philistines. The Philistine army was camped on one hill. Israel's army was on another. The valley was between them. 
a mighty hero named Goliath came out of the Philistine camp. He was from Gath. He was more than nine feet tall. He had a bronze helmet on his head. He wore bronze armor that weighed 125 pounds. On his legs, he wore bronze guards. He carried a bronze javelin on his back. His spear was as big as a weaver's rod. Its iron point weighed 15 pounds. The man who carried his shield walked along in front of him. Goliath stood there and shouted to the soldiers of Israel. He said, Why do you come out and line up for battle? I'm a Philistine. You are servants of Saul. Choose one of your men. Have him come down and face me. If he's able to fight and kill me, we'll all become your slaves. But if I win and kill him, you will become our slaves and serve us. Goliath continued, This day I dare the soldiers of Israel to send a man down to fight against me. Saul and the whole army of Israel heard what the Philistines said. They were terrified. Every morning and evening, Goliath came forward and stood there. He did it for 40 days. Then David picked up his wooden staff. He went down to the stream and chose five smooth stones. He put them in the pocket of his shepherd's bag. Then he took his sling in his hand and approached Goliath. At the same time, the Philistine kept coming closer to David. The man carrying Goliath's shield walked along in front of him. Goliath looked over at David. He saw how young he was. He also saw how healthy and handsome he was, and he hated him. He said to David, Why are you coming at me with sticks? Do you think I'm only a dog? The Philistine cursed David in the name of his gods. Come over here, he said. I'll feed your body to the birds and wild animals. David said to Goliath, You are coming to fight against me with a sword, a spear, and a javelin, but I come, uh, I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord who rules over all. He is the God of the armies of Israel. He is the one you have dared to fight against. This day the Lord will give me the victory over you. I'll strike you down. I'll cut off your head. This day I'll feed the bodies of the Philistine army to the birds and wild animals. Then the whole world will know there is a God in Israel. The Lord doesn't rescue people by using a sword or a spear. And everyone here will know it. The battle belongs to the Lord. He will hand all of you over to us. As the Philistine moved closer to attack him, David ran quickly to the battle line to meet him. He reached into his bag. He took out a stone. He put it in his sling. He slung it at Goliath. The stone hit him on the forehead and sank into it. He fell to the ground on his face. So David won the fight against Goliath with a sling and a stone. He struck down the Philistine and killed him. He did it without even using a sword. Okay, so that was a really long passage. So we're going to break it down a little bit, okay? So Saul and his army are on one side of the valley and the Philistines are on the other. And every day for 40 days, Goliath would come into the valley and challenge Saul's army to fight him. Every day, Goliath would challenge the best soldier to come and fight him. Nobody from Saul's army was brave enough to fight Goliath. Goliath was no small man, okay? He was over nine feet tall. That's like two of you standing on top of each other. His armor was 125 pounds. 125 pounds would be about the weight of you and your siblings put together. His sword alone weighed 15 pounds. That's as much as the size of a cat. No soldier wanted to fight Goliath. He was so much bigger than any of the other soldiers, and they were scared. Then came David. David was the youngest son. He was young. He was a small boy. David took care of sheep and was only at the valley because he was bringing his brother something to eat. Okay, so David uh, hears Goliath shouting and tells King Saul he will go fight him. Armed with only rocks and his slingshot, David fights Goliath. David knew that God was on his side and that God would help him and protect him. He put all of his trust in God. With one rock, David was able to defeat Goliath. That's such a cool story of how God protects us and takes care of us and helps us if we trust in him. 
But how does this apply to us, okay? For starters, God is always on our side, with, and he will always be with us. When we have God, nothing can truly destroy us. We may not face a giant like Goliath, or, um, but each of us have something that we deal with that's scary to us. It might be something like a big test, or um, someone who's being a bully to you, or just struggling with things that you're dealing with at home. Those things can all be big and daunting. They can make us feel like we are super small and powerless. But the thing is, God is with you. He can give you the tools you need, like courage and strength and bravery to beat those things. It might be scary and we might doubt if we can do it, but God gives us the power to be able to face our giants like David faced Goliath. Okay, let's work on a memory verse to help us remember that God is always on our side and will give us the tools we need to defeat our giants in our lives. So it is Hebrews 13, 6, and it says, So we can say boldly, the Lord helps me. I will not be afraid. What can mere human beings do to me? I want you guys to help me say this verse. It's so powerful, um, and it, uh, it, we need to keep it tucked into our memory and our hearts. It reminds us that God is always with us and can help us. So repeat what I say. Hebrews 13, 6. So we can say boldly, the Lord helps me. I will not be afraid. What can mere human beings do to me? You guys did an awesome job with that verse. Good job. I hope that you can keep it in your hearts and remember it when you face challenges. Remember, God used David over an entire army to defeat Goliath. God can defeat your battles. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for loving us and helping us when we face battles. Please help us to be brave and to be able to fight our battles knowing that you are in control and with us. Thank you guys. I hope that you enjoyed our lesson today and I hope to see you soon. Keep enjoying your summer.